So this next set of videos is over solving linear equations. So, so far, all of the problems that you've seen so far are simplify problems, meaning you're just making your problems prettier or as simple as possible. Here, we're going to be starting to deal with equations. And so in these equations, we are going to have to solve them, meaning to come up with an exact answer to this. So let's go ahead and jump into these vocabulary words that are important for this section here. Um, first of all, when we talk about linear equations, we've seen that word linear before when we were naming polynomials. We know that we named the polynomial a linear polynomial when the highest exponent on that polynomial is 1. Or most of the time we don't see that 1 written with the exponent, we just see it as an exponent in itself. So in polynomial form, we might have seen it as something like 3x plus 9. This is a linear polynomial. Now, to change that into equation, basically we're going to take this 3x plus 9 and we're going to set it equal to something. So something like 3x plus 9 is equal to 5. And we have changed it from polynomial format into equation format by just adding that equal sign to it. Now, when we're working these linear equations, what our goal is, is to come up with the solution to this. So we want to figure out what value this x needs to be to make this equation a true equation. Now, some of these are very simple equations, and you can do it by the guess and check method. But you'll see very quickly that these equations can become very complicated very quickly. So, to figure out how to solve these equations, let's first address some principles or some properties that are going to be useful. And these are called the properties of equality. It starts out by saying, if we have a true equation, then we can manipulate this equation by using our typical operations as long as you do it to both sides simultaneously. So in the addition and subtraction property of this equality, we can change this equation A equals B into adding something to both sides, and that remains a true equation, or into subtracting something from both sides, and that also remains a true equation. Now, it might seem pointless to do it at this time, but I'll show you how these properties are going to be useful in solving these equations when we get to our examples. But over here, let me use this example here to prove to you that this does remain a true equation. So hopefully you believe me that 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. Now I can manipulate this equation by either adding or subtracting something to it as long as we do it on both sides of the equal sign. So for example, I can add 5 to both sides of my equal sign here, and I still end up with a true equation. On the left, 2 plus 7 plus 5 gives me 14, and on the right, 9 plus 5 gives me 14. So we see that this addition property holds. I can add something to both sides and it still remain a true equation. Okay, so let me start over now, but let me subtract something from both sides. So starting with the same equation, 2 plus 7 equals 9. If I subtract 10 from both sides, I will once again remain with a true equation. 2 plus 7 minus 10 gives me a negative 1 on the left, and on the right, 9 minus 10 also gives me a negative 1. So we can see that this subtraction property is also a true property. Now, same thing with multiplication and division. It says I can do it to both sides of the equation, and it still remain a true equation. So basically, we can do any operation to these equations as long as we do it to both sides. But this multiplication and division has an extra stipulation that goes along with it. It says whatever you multiply and divide it by, it cannot be zero. 
The reason that we cannot have it be zero in our multiplication is because that just gives us the equation zero equals zero, and it doesn't help us in any sort of way. And the reason that it cannot be zero in the division is because we know that we cannot divide by zero. Now, I can prove these true using this example over here on the right, or hopefully you see that it will always work out the same way, and so I'm not going to take the time to do so. So now that we know what these equations are going to look like, and we know some properties of equality, let's figure out the steps to actually solve these linear equations. Our ultimate goal is to basically get your variable all by itself on one side of the equal sign. It's usually more natural for us to put the variable on the left, but it works just the same if your variable ends up on the right. So our goal is to isolate the variable. Our steps in doing so is, if you can, simplify both sides of the equation individually and simplify those as far as you possibly can. Then we're going to start rearranging things around that equal sign. So whenever you move things about the equal sign, you need to do opposite operations. And that's where those last properties of equality come in handy, the ones that we just learned. Um, the thing to know is that we need to make sure to add and subtract opposite operations before we multiply and divide opposite operations. And I'll show you of why here in an example. At this point, we should have our solution. We should have our variable isolated. So we should make sure that we have the correct answer before we hand it in. Okay. Now that we've walked all the way through this, let's actually see some examples of these linear equations. Now example one and two are pretty easy. You'll most likely be able to do that by using the guess and check method. But I'm going to show you the official way to do this using those properties of equality. So when we see it in more complicated examples, you know why and how we do it the way that we do. Let's start with problem number one here. Our steps are to simplify each side of the equation individually. And I cannot actually do that, so I move past step number one. Step number two is I use opposite operations to isolate my variable. So here I have x, and I want to isolate this x. So my opposite operation to get rid of the 7 is to subtract the 7. And my property of equality says if I do it on one side, then I have to do it on the other side as well. So the reason that we do these opposite operations is because they will cancel out. So on the left, my positive 7 and my negative 7 cancel out. That leaves me with x. And on the right, when I take 21 minus 7, that gives me 14. And now since I have my x isolated, that means I have my solution to this equation. Since I have my solution, I need to check and see if that's correct. And the way I check it is I just plug that number back into my variable. So my check here will look like 14 plus 7. Does that, in fact, equal 21? And, of course, it does, which means I have the correct solution. Moving over to example two, starting with my steps again, I cannot simplify either side of this equation. I need to use opposite operations. Notice this is five times x, so my opposite operation is to divide by five on both sides. Now the reason that I do that is on the right-hand side of this equation, five divided by five cancels out, leaving me with one, and one times x leaves me with x. So I have isolated my variable. On the left, 40 divided by 5 gives me 8. And since I have my variable isolated, that means I have the solution to this problem. Moving on to step number 3, checking my solution. I want to know, is 40 equivalent to 5 times? And I plug 8 back into my variable. Of course it is, so of course I have the correct solution here. Now you've seen some very simple examples of this, ones that you probably could have done without using any math knowledge that I've explained to you in this video. 
But in example three, you might see that it's already starting to get more difficult. Because of time, I'm going to stop this video here. And in the next video, I'm going to come straight back to example three and some more examples of solving linear equations.